The world uh, is going quants mad. Uh, you can ask anybody who's in the active investment management world and they will tell you they're under huge pressure from the machines. The machines are taking over. Uh, is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Definitely a bad thing. Uh, the machines can do many things, but everybody who's in finance is all doing the same thing, which is looking to and forecasting the future. And I do not believe that machines have a better view of the future, which is a future for human beings than human beings do. Yeah, it's a great question because the business schools are still churning out people with the old skill set. And yet we are moving into a world where, for instance, politics is much, much more important than it was in the past. And yet, well, they don't study politics at business school. So obviously we do have people who study politics. Uh, we have gr uh, graduates in political science. But I think the key skill going forward is really sociology. Uh, an understanding of how people behave together because that's what a market is. It's actually defined by the Oxford English Dictionary as people getting together to form a price. So you do need to understand people and people working in groups, my understanding is sociology. People working individually is psychology. There may also be the psychology of the crowd. These are the skills that we need to get into uh, finance. And obviously I believe also an understanding of history because the understanding of history is simply a study of how people have behaved in groups and how that has affected price determination. Yeah, the crucial thing about financial history is about mechanisms. So the world works in a certain way, banks work in a certain way, finance works in a certain way. Uh, there are many people who don't know how these things work. Uh, and they kind of arrive in the city of London and kind of find out by losing other people's money. So one of the main benefits of looking at financial history is to fully understand the mechanisms, i.e. if we pull string A, what happens with string B? Uh, it'd be good if we knew that in advance. And strangely enough, that is not something that's well taught in finance, particularly the relationships between money and credit. So a, story, a study of history can, can give us that. And obviously it can give us some of the more lurid examples of stupidity. And uh, maybe the secret to being smart is not to be smart, but to be less stupid. I clearly believe that the robo-advisor ha has a limited role in the future because they will not understand the crucial elements that anybody has to invest for, uh, which are major changes in society. Now those could be technological changes, they could be political changes. Uh, I can just imagine a robo-advisor. What does a robo-advisor know about Tesla, for instance? What do I know about Tesla? Probably not very much. But somebody somewhere is studying Tesla in great detail and will have a reasonable idea of getting it right or getting it wrong. The robo-advisor buys it anyway to the extent that the robo-advisor is buying a market cap weighted indices. So I'm afraid the robo-advisor, probably how we had it in the 18th century, would have owned lots of turnpikes, then invested in lots of canals. It definitely didn't change when it saw the railway coming. Whereas at least some humans were able to work out that the railway was the death for the canal and the death for the turnpike. So robo-advisors will work until they don't work.